Okay, so now how about this testing where we have two means. So okay, we've got AFL players, we've got a new supplement, and we want to see if this new supplement increases their cardiac output, which is a measure of the amount of blood you pump per minute. And if it does, then we'll start using it on AFL players, assuming it's not illegal. So what we're doing, we're taking 40 players, we've randomly allocated them into two groups. First 20 are gonna get the supplement, the other 20 are gonna get a placebo. So it looks just like the supplement, just have no active ingredient. Put them on the treatment. After two weeks, we measure their cardiac output. And what we want to do is we want to say, is the mean cardiac output on the supplement higher or lower or the same as the mean cardiac output on the placebo? So we've got two lots of observations, each with 20, because we've got 20 people in each. And we're going to test this at the 5% significance level. And then we're going to do another 5% confidence interval. So first of all, GC. So for your hypothesis test of two means, here are our naught and alternative hypothesis. Here's our t-test, where x1 is the sample mean for the first group, x2 is the sample mean for the second group, s1 is the sample variance of the first group, so s1 squared, and s2 squared is the sample variance for the second group, n1 is the number of people in the first group, n2 is the number of people in the second group. Again, here's the confidence interval with x1 bar, x2 bar the same as above, etc. So, how to do it in MATLAB? First of all, let's get the data in there. So the first one we'll call supplement equals, and if I go to here, I can copy and paste. Close the bracket. Hit that, let's just check using the length. Yeah, there's 20 there, no problem. Placebo, square bracket, get the data, copy it, go here, paste it, close the bracket, again, let's check. We've got 20 there. So if we look at the mean of the sup, we've got 5.76, while the mean of the placebo is 6.66. So it does seem to be different, but is it significantly different? Right. How do we do this? Well, we're going to do our test, and this form of test here, when you look at the standard. This is assuming that we have unequal variances, which is the one you've seen. So we have to let MATLAB know that. So, as before, we're going to let it know that we need a hypothesis test, a p-value, a compass interval, and some stats. And it's t-test, two, because we've got two things. We give it the first lot of data, the second lot of data. Then the next number, if we put it in, would be, um, I think, our alpha. So we've got nothing there. The next one would be our, I can't remember, but we just put a blank in there. And then the one to say is an equal. Like that. That gives our results, just so I can have a look what the various things were. i do two test two. Yeah, so I, um, the first one I said is the alpha, the second one is the tail, so we're testing for not equal, so because we're testing in our thing for not equal, so um, our null hypothesis is that they're not equal, what we call a two-sided, we'll automatically go for the two side. If you wanted to test that one was greater than the other, you'd do your one-sided test, but we're not doing that. So we have got a blank in there, a blank in there, and then the variable type, we let it know that we've got unequal variances. So the var type is the variance type, we've got unequal. So if we go back and look at what we've got, here's our results. So zero, so we retain, we've got a p-value of 0.1881. Here's our confidence interval. We've got our t-star, our degrees of freedom. Notice this is fractional degrees of freedom, which I talked about in the um, third lecture. So there's all the information, so let's answer the question. 
So, first of all, we should define our null alternative hypothesis. So our null is that e1 minus e2 is equal to 0. So that basically says that the two means are the same. Versus the alternative is that u1 minus u2 is not equal to 0. So we think that difference where u1 is the mean cardiac output on the supplement and two is is the mean cardiac output on the placebo. So I've written my null hypothesis, I'll turn to hypothesis, and I've defined what they mean. Okay. The value of the statistic is it's this number here, and this is a T statistic. Remember my rule of thumb is this if this is less than minus two or greater than two we're going to reject else we're going to retain so this we're going to retain. Now how do we get the p-value? Well we think about minus 1.34. So we've got minus 1.34 and the alternative is the positive sign 1.34. So if this is the appropriate t distribution if we wanted the p-value, we'd want this blue area plus this blue area. So we can actually put in, and we can go into MATLAB, and we can enter t minus 1.34. And obviously, we need the degrees of freedom. The nice thing is we've got the degrees of freedom, 37.9943. So we could use our commands. We could say t cdf minus 1. 3 degrees of freedom 37.9943 and that command there gives us the CDF so it gives us the area to the left of this so it's roughly given us this blue area because this is nice symmetric if we wanted both these areas we just times it by 2 0 0.1881 which is the p-value we've got there. So we didn't really need to calculate it, but there's an example of what we're doing. So there's the p-value. So let's copy it. And we go back and say the p-value is, and what we conclude, we retain the null hypothesis as the p-value equals 0.1881 is greater than 0.05. So we're doing a 5% significance level. Okay. So we conclude that there is no evidence to indicate a difference in the mean cardiac output for AFL players on the supplement compared to AFL players on the placebo. So, the supplement didn't seem to make a big difference. As for the confidence interval, well, we can calculate that, or instead, it's just that. So copy, paste, and 
as the confidence interval. And to summarize that, we can say we are 95% confident that the mean cardiac output of AFL players on the month is between minus 1.2552 and 0.2552 larger than the mean cardiac output of AFL players on the proceed by Probably should just put in here the units, which is liters per min. Excellent. All done. See you next time.